Hello, my friends. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Anovella. Today is Sunday, and that means coffee clutch. What do you think of my cup? <sighs> if you can read it, it's profanity. Anyway, uh, during my coffee clutch, I invite you for uh, a coffee and a chat, and we talk about last week. So yeah, and, and I have a cookie this time. I baked them myself. Anyway, I had a good week, a good reading week. I finally start working tomorrow, so yay! I'm not a person to sit around and do nothing. So I can start uh, my editing job uh, tomorrow, so yeah, I'm happy. Anyway, um, I have brought a couple of books from the library and I've read Yesterday, or the day before, I read um, Devils and Saints by Jean-Baptiste Andrea. And that's about... It starts with um, a man who plays on one of those free pianos that are now everywhere in the airports and train stations and other public places. I don't know if you have that in the States, but at least in Europe, we you can find them everywhere. And the guy is 68, I believe. And he is an amazing pianist. Absolutely beautiful. And everybody comes to him and says, well, he, you you are that good. You can you can do a concerto and, and, and a fill concert halls and have a career and he's not interested. He really isn't. And he gets offers to play in hotels and whatever. No, no, he doesn't want to do it. And then finally somebody says to him, But why are you playing every day here? And he says, Well, I'm waiting. And somebody asks. Oh, of course, they ask, for what? And then the story really starts. Then we go back to uh, 1969, during the time that uh, there's the first moon landing, and his parents, the little boy, who is the old man who is now a little boy, um, his parents and his little sister uh, die in a plane crash. And he is well off, his family was well off, but there was there were no uncles or aunts who, who could take care of him. And he is sent off by the government to an orphanage, but it's a very old and, and uh, very abandoned orphanage. There are only like 15, 20 kids. And um, yeah, it's a cruel place. It's not... He, he suffers a lot of abuse, no sexual abuse, but more, uh, although not very sure, but uh, especially physical abuse, a lot of beatings and, yeah, horrible things happen to, to the kids. And um, there's also, he has to work for the Abbey and um, uh, the, the elder, says, well, uh, you can, I can see you're very good with your fingers, you can do all the typing work. And in the office, there's also piano, and the little boy asks, well, can I also play the piano? And they say, no, uh, that's not for you. Nobody can play the piano, so nobody ever did. And uh, that, that's the biggest punishment of all, even though he has just lost his family, they really don't care. And uh, finally, he finds a solution to get out of there. And uh, yeah, it's it's a, it's a beautiful book. It's uh, fast paced. It's, it's the writing is crisp and clean. It's it's really beautiful. It's uh, yeah, it's um, really good. It it just came out in English. Uh, I, I read it via my um, via Kobo. So you it you can find it everywhere. And then I also um, read this book. Second, this one, Marguerite. This is just a, a Belgian book. You can't ha find it in uh, English. It's written by Katrine, uh, Kathleen Vregen. It's about, um, well, 
people know the brothers Van Eyck, uh, or Van Eyck, Van Eyck, uh, the Flemish primitives uh, who painted, amongst others, the altarpiece. They were the first to use, or one of the first to use, oil paints. And um, uh, Marguerite is the sister of the two brothers, uh, Hubert and Jan. And um, she is uh, also a very gifted painter. She's much loved by the brothers. She's also, it's not like they hit her or anything. Uh, she met uh, kings and queens and everybody. She she really met some very, very important people. And they knew they were. she were, was working as a painter in their studio. And uh, she, for the altarpiece, she did most of the plants and flowers and... Uh, she painted the women on the altarpiece. So, yeah, it's uh, a big part of uh, the altarpiece. And uh, it was a very good read. It was very interesting. I learned a lot. And that's what I like. Uh, it's about Ghent and I know Ghent. And you, it really came alive in, in uh, that book. And I really enjoyed it. So my Dutch-speaking uh, followers, Margrethe, it's, it's a fun read. Then I also brought Oh Pioneers by Willa Carter or Cather. Uh, so I'm really looking forward to uh, reading this. This is about the first uh, first settlers. It's about the uh, yeah family of farmers in the prairie of Nebraska, and uh, Alexandra is is asked to take care of the farm. And then I also brought this one, Cleopatra and Frankenstein by Coco Mellors. I don't know, it didn't get very good ratings on uh, Goodreads, but we are, it's for free, so I don't care. And then this one will be translated, will come out in English in a couple of months. It's by Stine Pilgaard, a Danish author, and it's uh, My Mother Says. And it's about somebody who uh, lost their girlfriend and uh, they have to go back to their parents and the mother uh, throws, uh, you know, those mother wisdoms. <laughs> she has, every day she has a wisdom and she tries to follow her mother's wisdoms, but basically they don't work. Apparently it's a very funny book. So yeah, I'll let you know. And then I also brought uh, A Woman by Sibilla Aleramo. Uh, Sibilla Aleramo is the pen name of um, the Italian writer Rina Faccio. And uh, in A Woman, she describes her youth in Milan and her uh, uh, time as a girl, in, uh, as a little girl in a South Italian village. And uh, so she was destined to get married and have kids and uh, cook pasta and that's it, uh, more or less, and do the cooking and the cleaning and the... But she is too bright for that. And uh, as soon as she's old enough, she, she tries to find a way to get out of that uh, pattern. So yeah, I'm really curious what how that is. This is by uh, a publisher named, uh, a publishing house named Orlando, and they only uh, print female books that are forgotten. So, uh, Sibia Aleramo is, uh, was born in 1876 and died in 1960. So it's all those books. Uh, there are some brilliant books uh, that I've read already uh, that is published by them. And then I have another late, belated uh, birthday present, Orpheus Builds a Girl. I really... Uh, Looking forward to reading this by Heather Perry. Yeah, it's horror. Willem von Thor is dying. As he looks back on his life, he reflects on his upbring upbringing in Dresden, his beloved grandmother and his medical career during the Second World War. But of, above all, he remembers his darling Lucy, the great love of his life, the dark-haired beauty who appeared to him in a dream years before they met. Orpheus built a girl. I uh, this is 
maybe I will read this tonight when I finish my other book, but that I will talk about uh, on Wednesday. So yeah, that's about it. Um, what are you reading? Let me know. Do you have any tips for me? Uh, how was your week? Did you have a good week? Um, um, I'm still waiting for Muffin because she is on a play date. Yeah, she's a busy lady. And um, yeah, I just came back from my father's uh, from my father's uh, place. So I took the train and I read about 300 pages. I can. It's so lovely. It was quiet on the train and it's yeah amazing. So yeah, that's it. I uh, I hope you have a good week. That's good. If it's as good as mine, you'll be fine. So yeah. <laughs> bye bye.